Thank you. So welcome everyone and thank you so much for coming along tonight or this afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from, to learn a little about, bit about the science of NRF2 activation and what that could mean for your horse. So I am Patricia Bowerman, I am in the UK, and I will be joined tonight by four fabulous equine experts from the US and the UK. So we're going to jump in right now with our speakers first, because a couple are, are short on time. And we're going to hear from them about their personal horses and horses that they work with. And then we'll look at what NRF2 activation is and how it works to combat so many issues. And then at the end, we'll take your questions. So Sarah is our first speaker. She's joining us from the US. She has an associate professor of equine studies. Among her impressive accolades are horse show equestrian winning many awards. And Sarah also enjoys barrel racing and pole bending competitions, as well as raises and trains horses. So, phew, uh, that's quite a bit. So, uh, Sarah, if you'd unmute yourself and uh, take it away. Um, I appreciate energy that we have between uh, the two of us, this will um, be exciting and it's something we're really looking forward to. So I have been with Life Vantage very long, I joined since February. So my experiences are relatively new, but I'm so excited and energized about the things that I'm experiencing. So, um, uh, I'm going to, there's like three horses that I can pick out that I have, they're all in the, uh, the pro, the pro tandem. Uh, the biggest thing I think with horse and human that I've experienced is the healing that takes place. Um, one of my, uh, lesson people had a horse that, had, um, on a heel ball off and, um, within four days, you couldn't even tell where it was. That was remarkable in the healing. Uh, I have another horse that um, have, was diagnosed with shivers. Um, he had flipped over with uh, the um, uh, rider and they were at kind of at a loss. So they took him to the, found out that he had shivers and he is also on the pro tandem. They have not um, decided to get on him yet. Because the flipping that he did, but they are gradually putting him back to work now. And they say that now he just floats like he's he's never moved before on a lunge line. And we're starting to see a lot of improvement in his attitude. Um, so to me, that is, you know, encouraging also. I have my own personal barrel mare on there and she has struggled with ulcers and just, um, she's a super sensitive mare, uh, kind of nervous. And after I had it on her about two weeks, I mean, she actually does a flat-footed walk now, um, mm -hmm. which was now um, in our team. But um, so I, I see a big difference in her. I see a difference in her hair coat, um, just temperament. Just she's just all around much easier, and she seems more. So the behavior I've seen in her has been super. Um, the healing also has crossed over to the human side of things um, and myself also, um, because I am an instructor, um, I teach outside, I ride horses outside, I constantly, uh, the skin damage on my face has definitely been um, a factor and little that to happen, it's like all of a sudden they're gone. So I had some places on my ears and on my nose that were, you know, the typical kind of um, flaky kind of skin and those both have also disappeared. So the the biggest thing that I've taken away is um, just the healing and like mental clarity, I think uh, in the animals in addition to myself. So I, I'm just super excited about it. Um, every time I'm on one of these Zoom calls, the energy that you get from this this company and the product and hear the people's stories has just driven me to like be so excited to be a part of it well, so. great well thank you sarah so much that's uh quite diverse and i can i i love your energy you know love that so thank you so much 
So now we're going to hear from Candace, our next speaker, also from the US. She has a BS in equine science, has a team of health cons consultants focusing on natural approaches to equine health, and is a writing instructor as well. And uh, she has a little guest that we're going to have a, a look at. So I'm going to share my screen again. And Candace, if you want to unmute yourself, and I'll bring up Appleby here. So tell Hi, us, everybody. Tell us about Appleby. I sure will. Thank you, Patricia, for having me on here. This is awesome. I'm so excited. So I actually have four horses right now, um, kind of personally, or that I'm working with on a daily basis that I have on their pro tandem. Um, we'll talk about Appleby first. So I teach lessons at a therapeutic writing center. It's a research center. So we do a lot of studies and stuff there also, as well as incorporate the programs and Appleby is a 28 year old horse that we have for our therapeutic writing program, as well as my regular lesson program. And if you look at this picture, she is very much a Cushing's case. Um, we've had veterinarians work with her and we've tried different stuff, but because they're not for profit, it's hard to get, you know, the funding for medications, that kind of stuff. So we just started her a couple weeks ago on the pro tandem. And I finally got them to let me start her on it because this spring coming out of winter, she had a lot of sinus infections. I mean, she smelled horrible. She had gunk drainage coming out of her nose, her mouth. It, I, they thought she was going to die. She looked horrible. So they had the vets out, they put her on SMZs. The antibiotics weren't strong enough. So then they went ahead and put her on a different type of antibiotic and that helped her. And then we started her on the pro tandem and I have been using her for the past two weeks now for lessons. Again, she acts like she is 10 years younger already. Um, I will be keeping track, taking pictures and um, writing down notes of the progress and stuff she goes through. So I will um, keep everyone informed on all of that. So everyone can see because she really is a good case study. Her feet, she, we've had issues with laminitis with her and her immune system just being so weak with all of this. So I'm hoping that she'll be a good case study for me to work with so I can show all of you guys the progress that we've had because in the amount of two weeks, I can see a lot of differences already. So she has one study also at Lakeland Center. We have another horse that I have some students that are gonna try to show this year and he's actually an ex eventing pony now slash therapeutic riding pony, but he gets very nervous when he is by himself if it's windy, if he hears lots of noises, if he sees strange things. So we have started him on the pro tandem to see if it, how much it helps calm and quiet him. And I actually used him for a lesson last night and Indiana this year has had horrible weather for riding and it's super windy, super cold. I put him in the indoor all by himself, which normally I have to have another horse in there. And my little lesson student, she's very timid. We're working on building confidence. Um, she was able to handle him. He was a little nervous, but I was able to make noises. I pulled up bleacher sounds and stuff on my phone because we're getting ready for show season. And she handled it and he handled it really well. He, he's adjusting pretty well. And again, he's just started two weeks ago. So he is doing great. Um, I have two personal horses myself, uh, my daughter and I, and the original horse that started this whole process for us is her show quarter horse that I have taken over. And he had autoimmune issues. And every time he would get a vaccination, it would come out in his eyes. His eyes would get all cloudy and then he couldn't see. And that's not good for showing. So we worked with the vet. I have a really good holistic vet. And she does a lot of the Chinese herbs and stuff. And that helped for a while. And then I decided to put him on the pro tandem. And I started him with two pills a day because he had a major issue. But normally I just put him on one. Applebee I have on two. Mal I have on one just to kind of see how the progression is for that. Um, but Kirby, we started on to the quarter horse and it took four or five months, but the cloudiness all went away. He has not had any issues in his movement. He's my dressage horse now. He went from a Western pleasure horse to a nice dressage horse. He has that much more energy and he's 16 years old this year. So he's a totally different horse, so much happier. And then we, we also have my daughter's little show POA mare that she showed and she's won a bunch of stuff with, so we want to breed her. 
So she is seven this year, maiden mayor. She is actually at St. Mary of the Woods College because that's where my daughter goes with Sarah right now. Um, and their um, repro program is starting out. So she's one of the first mayors that they're using for that. And we just bred her a couple of weeks ago. So next week we'll be doing a 14, 15 day check to see if she took or not. So that's the progress with her. And then again, like Sarah, I myself, I teach, I train. I had a lot of back issues before. Well, I started taking the pro tandem and that helped a lot. But then the collagen, you guys, the collagen is amazing. I have a crooked back. So that really affects my hips, especially since I'm a school bus driver also. So I'm sitting quite a lot. I wasn't able to ride horses as much as I could before, but I'm back to riding five, six horses as much as I can. It's amazing what the collagen has done to me in just a little bit of time. So that's just a quick version of some of the chapters of my story here. And um, again, I will keep you guys updated on the progress of the horses that I have that we're doing the studies on. So thank you, Patricia. Oh, thank you so much. We look forward to your updates and thank you for all that. That's brilliant. So now we have Amber again from the US who is a kinesiologist for human and animal health, raises and shows Great Danes and French Bulldogs and has been riding for 30 years. Definite animal lover. So Amber, if you'd unmute yourself and let's hear from you. Yeah, so I'm gonna address some of the questions okay. in the chat as well. I have a little little guy, little girl actually with me right here. Um, but yes, I've been a kinesiologist for 15 years. I've been around horses and dogs, raised them for 30 years. Um, coupled with working with different vets and a vast range of different things. Um, and then also in the human side. So I love being able to have both areas. Um, and don't let these girls humble themselves. Sarah is actually an instructor at one of the only equine colleges in Indiana. And she is 60 years old and she is running the fastest times um, of horses in barrels. But yeah, the beautiful thing about what ProTandem does, you guys, is if we look up, if you were to go to Google Scholar and you were to type in, you know, Cushing's or um, asthma or navicular or laninitis or um, colic or, you know, all of these issues, if you were to type that in and then add in and oxidative stress, which is what I know Patricia is going to go over in just a minute, you are going to find a ton of resources, a ton of information that oxidative stress and that inflammation is the root cause to usually the issue we have going on. So the really cool thing is usually the issue is actually a symptom of what we have going on on the inside, right? Um, and it's across the board. It's not only with horses. It's the exact same with dogs. It's the exact same with cows. Um, Candace didn't talk about it, but we work with one of the largest llama farms in yeah. Indiana, and we just saved a llama's life um, oh. just last week. And uh, it was uh, a little girl's llama who she's so supposed to show this summer. The vet didn't really have an answer, um, kind of didn't give it a a great diagnosis and the llama was running in circles and just a few days after starting pro tandem. So um, the beauty of it is, is all mammals, our cellular structure is the same, all right? Our foundation is exactly the same. So these key words that you might hear in people, diabetes, um, uh, autoimmune order, disorders, you know, we're seeing that also in our animals. And uh, it's happening a lot more frequently and a lot earlier in age than it should. Why? We live in a toxic world and it's all affecting us at a, at a very increased rate. So I'll tell you a few stories that I have. Um, one, about four years ago, I, so I started this business when I had twins four years ago, and I also have horses. I think I had a litter of Great Dane puppies around the same time. Um, and 
on bed rest before having twins, I sent my parents out to purchase this horse that I had just seen video and live and all of this, right? Well, a horse comes to us and it has double eye cancer. Yay. Didn't know about that. Um, we ended up having to get some of its eyelids removed and um, did a few uh, like liquid chemo treatments. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, we had to do that, but now I know what is the result of doing that, right? You're going to kill the horse's immune system. You're going to kill all the good cells in the body too. Uh, you're going to kill the hooves, the hair, the, um, you're going to create more anxiety. So I started him on Protandum and I actually started him with two Protandum. He was about a 15 year old horse. Um, and I can't tell you like his hair coat changed his mane changed colors for the better, for the better. Um, his hoof growth started growing and uh, just those things were drastic. Um, his issues never came back. And so that's what I absolutely love as well is it was now kind of a healer and reduced risk for the future. Um, I have a, another horse who, I live on farms and in Indiana, it is corn fields and soybean fields and tractors and my backyard is tractors and uh, that creates a lot of dust. And so we didn't even think about it, but we had gotten a new horse and uh, she came from really cold environment down to Indiana, probably wasn't used to a bunch of corn dust and uh, it started asthma. So great, right? You have this performance horse that now has asthma. That's my show horse, not gonna be a good deal. Um, we did a round uh, treatment of an inhaler and then started on a pro tandem. Now that asthma totally went away, her lungs cleared up, but the beauty of it was, is it didn't come back. And then coming into the next season, I doubled up on two pro tandem one in the morning, one at night, to make sure that her body was prepared. And we didn't have an issue, which was really awesome. Um, how do I, we administer this with our horses? I just throw it in the grain. That's it. It's crushable. You could crush it if you wanted. If not, I just throw it in the grain. Um, I did have one horse that would just eat it out of my hand. Um, and I've had another picky horse that I needed to put it in like a piece of an apple. But you can administer it any way. Um, the beauty of it is, is there's a lot of supplements out there, right? And in the horse industry, you have a lot of people trying um, to be the chemist really for every different horse. Um, different supplements here, different supplements here, different grain, different oils, different herbs or whatever, right? This takes out all of that. And I know it might sound crazy, but instead of trying to do all of that, it is one solution for all of it, which makes it incredibly fascinating. Um, I guess another story, I'll switch over to dogs really quick. Um, but again, same things happen. These are just things that I experienced in dogs. Same thing happens with uh, horses. My Great Danes are 180 pounds, larger than a mini horse that I have. So, you know, the, the body, the cellular structure, though, is exactly the same. Um, fertility, all right? That's a big thing. There's been a big drag in fertility in the last year. Um, I'm gonna couple it with the increase of toxic overload in our environment, but we can help the body be more fertile with protandum. And so I um, did this with a litter of Great Danes and I actually had a litter of 14 Great Dane puppies at one time was a bit crazy, but um, I wanted to make sure also that that mom had enough milk, that she wasn't under a ton of stress, that her body was working the way that it should to be able to care for these 14 babies. Um, and it was awesome. No struggles afterwards. Um, her cervix looked amazing. She is actually seven-year-old Great Dane and her cervix still looks so good that we're gonna shoot for one more round of pups. I do it very responsibly. She's only ever had three litters in her life. Um, but 
that is a testament to what we're doing, repairing and rejuvenating the body. Um, my oldest great Dane is 10. She still can run and walk a mile with me every day. Her eyes and her coordination is fantastic. I have a video of her catching treats and, um, and uh, 10 years old is really good for a great Dane. Um, with these Frenchies, little guys, they can have a lot of issues. Um, mm -hmm. inflammation in particular in the larynx and the trachea. And so I did, um, they've been on the pet tandem, which is the smaller animal version. And um, yeah, absolutely. Pet tandem, the smaller animal version. And um, I've started from moms completely during fertility, completely during pregnancy, completely post-pregnancy. Um, and then a little guys, I start them on it as soon as they can eat mush. As soon as they are eating puppy mush, they are starting on it. Um, I have noticed better coats, less anxiety, easier to train. Um, and uh, oh, I think overall, like just better health. And again, that's not only for animals, also for people. So I love the ability if you're questioning like would this work for this would this work for this would this work for this do a quick google scholar not google all right google is mm, all right you want to go to google scholar and then you type in whatever your issue is with oxidative stress with pro tandem we know scientifically proven hands down uh 30 universities have studied it on their own we can reduce that inflammation factor by 70% in 90 days, all right? 40% in 30 days. Um, you have performance horses, barrel racers, race horses, um, reining and roping horses, um, any horses that are being transported all over the place, they are at a much higher level of stress. And so we wanna make sure that we can reduce that for them. Um, but, yeah, that has kind of been my story. Oh, I do have another uh, Great Dane puppy. Actually, the vets gave him an end of life diagnosis when he was six weeks old. They didn't know really how to fix him. He was regurgitating after every meal, um, had something going on with his esophagus um, and the sphincter. They didn't really know. Of course, when doctors don't know, what do I do? Listen, we're just gonna go back to what I know to do. Um, he is now over a year old. He's incredibly healthy. He has no issues. The meds that the vets wanted to put him on in a trial med, I tried it for 20 days. It didn't do anything. And um, this has absolutely just changed his trajectory of life. It has given him life. And um, he is just a one and a half year old, healthy looking boy and not having any issues anymore. So um, that's kind of the things that I've experienced, but I just, I am super excited to be able to have a very simple one thing to give for many, 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 there's over 300 different diseases, ailments, and issues that I know of that this will benefit and help. Um, and age doesn't matter. Um, you know, if you come out, I've had a calf that was rejected by its mom, needed to be bottle fed. And those are really hard um, to keep weight on them and to keep them alive. And so to be able to have this to help boost their immune system, um, their absorption rate and things like that in their body. Um, so thanks for Tr Patricia. Uh, I'll be here for Q&A after um, Lisa's done. And but uh, I am just so excited to be able to share this with you guys. We've been seeing some amazing, amazing results over here in the States. Oh, thank you so much, Amber. And I, I love the, the animal stories because there's no placebo effect mm -hmm. and they rely on us. They rely on us to make those decisions for them. And it's, this is such an easy decision to make and it's so effective. So I'll thank you. And now we're gonna hop across the pond. Uh, we're gonna welcome Lisa who's here in the UK. And she is a horse owner as well as a dressage trainee judge and has her own business focusing on natural approaches to equine health. So Lisa, if you'll unmute yourself, over to you. Oh, hey guys, good evening, everybody. And um, the mm -hmm. funny thing is when I saw 
some people advertising this presentation. Somebody said, are all the presenters American? <laughs> we want to hear someone from here. Well, here I am. <laughs> um, so I, I just thought we'd throw me in the mix so that we could have a different accent and somebody from somewhere else as well. It would uh, be cool. But um, I'll just give you, I want to keep it and try and keep it as short as possible because everybody knows when it comes to this, I can go on a bit, but I'm going to try and rein it in. But my background with horses comes from a very young age. I've rode ever since I was seven years old. Um, and probably about mid-teenage years, I worked for a competitive yard. Uh, we focused majority on show horses through the summer season, uh, usually hunters and working hunters. And through the off season, we would uh, buy and produce young horses, mainly through show jumping. Um, but I left the UK and lived in the US for about 12 years. And with leaving home and the travel and then having a career and a family and a corporate job and being a single mom, I had quite a break from the horse industry. And the really great and interesting part that I'll share with you guys is it was actually becoming a life vantage distributor that allowed me both number one, a business and opportunity to have the time to return to the equestrian industry. And number two, the resources to be able to do so as well, if I'm honest. Um, so I, I'm back at it like a mad woman, like I was back then. Um, and have been more focused on dressage since then. But I want to share with you, um, I actually got into Life Vantage, funnily enough, um, before, just before I got back into the equestrian side of my life. And it was the benefits that I had had as a, in, as a person that really had me become a life vantage distributor in the first place. But then obviously when I started to learn more and more about the effects of oxidative stress on equines, obviously this started to become more and more interesting to me. Um, and I have, I have one of my horses, I'll show you a quick image if it lets me. Uh, I think this is it. This is my, one of my horses, Sid. He's a massive 18 hand heavyweight registered Irish draft hunter. Um, he's a very big lad. He would be classed as a heavyweight. And when I got him at six, seven, rising eight, he had unfortunately had a very, very full career as a hunter. Uh, not a show hunter. I mean, like a full on galloping down the road hunter. Um, and he'd been, you know, probably rode not apologetically because he was a hunter and he'd um, had a very active life for a horse of his size from the age of four up until seven. He'd probably done five full seasons as a hunter. Um, and when I, after a couple of years of owning him, I started to realize I needed a weight carrier at the time. So he was appropriate for me, um, a bit wild <laughs> as a first horse back after a while, but uh, we figured it out. And he was starting to show some very slight signs of early onset arthritis. So I started to put him on pretending immediately, knowing everything that I do about the product and how it works in humans and also seeing other people's examples of it working in the equines also. Um, and it did actually really help uh, him become a lot looser, more supple. But I'll tell you the most shocking thing um, about him that this really pricked my ears up with. He had, when I got him, quite a large form splint on his front offside leg. It was not a problem to him. He was never lame. It was fully formed. It was never an issue. The vet passed him off on it, um, but it was pretty large. And then on his um, offside, that was his near side, his offside front, he also had quite a large, not as big, but still a pretty decent splint on that leg as well. And they never caused him a problem, but what after a while of putting him 
on pretendum, I decided to up his dose to four tablets a day just because I was looking at other horses and what they were taking. And he's a massive dude, you know, he's a huge horse. And so I put him on four tablets a day for probably three to six months in between there somewhere. One day I was uh, after giving him a shower and I put him in his stable and I was just going down over his legs. I got to his front legs and he'd had these splints for three years. The splint on his offside, the smaller one, had completely reabsorbed into his leg. Comple I mean, completely. You couldn't even tell it was there. So I immediately jumped to the other leg. And that one was pretty much almost gone. There was still some sign of it. But that splint that was quite significant had completely reabsorbed. Now, call it a coincidence. It had been there the whole time. It was there before I got him. But since I upped the dose to the four a day, it suddenly disappeared. Now I have another horse who is very different. <laughs> She's a very lightweight, small 16 hand Oldenburg mare that would be my dressage horse. Um, she was rising too when I got her. She came with, I purchased her, the breeder sent me a really apologetic message saying, you're never gonna believe it. She's injured her leg this week, but don't worry, she's fine. It's not too bad. But she came down and they dressed it with some wound powder and that wound didn't heal. In fact, that mare didn't heal well at all. If she scraped her skin quite significantly, so it was broken and flesh was showing, she tended to heal quite proud. So I don't know if that's a UK terminology for the, the it didn't heal flush to the skin. It'd have like a little lump and it, it just didn't heal properly. Um, so after I checked his legs, I put this mare on pretendum from the very day I got her. She took one to two pretendum every single day in her feed because I just wanted her to grow fit, healthy, as physically possible as a youngster. Um, I walked over to her stable and I checked her leg and that mark had completely gone altogether because I was wondering if there was a bone chip in there at one point. It was quite hard. Um, so that was my first experience with my own horses. I then um, introduced it to a friend of mine in the Netherlands who breeds, believe it or not, quarter horses in the Netherlands. Um, it's the least you would expect somebody to be doing over there, I think. Um, but she does, and she's a trainer, and she uh, trains other people. And she had an old pony that was really bad with laminitis. I mean, though it could barely walk. Um, and so she was giving it two a day. It wasn't really doing anything. She upped it up as a loading dose for a month on four a day. And that pony went from hardly being able to walk to walk like a normal pony down the block. And so this is not a coincidence. This is definitely having an effect. And if you like um, Amber said, and I think Patricia's gonna explain, if you go and start to do your own research on the effects of oxidative stress in equines, you will see it is related to many, many health issues. And so, um, we're all, you can tell we're all super excited and passionate about this. And that is simply because of our own personal experiences and our love for these incredible four-legged beasts that drive us insane. <laughs> Why do we do it? Um, and, and we want to really just help share these stories with other people, increase people's um, confidence in just giving this a go, it's way more affordable than most other options that are out there. Um, and as I have two French Bulldogs, funnily enough as well, Amber. And mm -hmm. I will tell you now, anytime my son takes care of them most of the time, they're like his babies, he, they, he stole them. They basically don't belong to me anymore. Um, and anytime he, the only time he comes down to talk to me about the dogs is if he thinks they need the vet, because obviously then I have to pay. Um, but, I'll tell you now, before any of those dogs go to the vet, whether they just don't look well, whether they're limping, whether they're, you know, the cherry pop in their eye, whatever it's ever been, I'm telling you now, I put those dogs on a pretendum a day for at least three days to a week before I will even consider taking them to the vet. And I'll tell you what, not neither of them have ever needed to go to the vet. They've been fine after three or four days. Um, so yeah, I highly, highly uh, recommend 
get in back to the person who invited you here, get your questions answered, give this a chance. And also I made, you know, this stuff is so amazing. I made this into a whole lifestyle and we've been able to take this product all over Europe um, and expand it into several different markets. So yeah, that's all I've got for you guys. I think that's probably enough. <laughs> oh, Lisa, that was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I know that you are in 22 minutes. Going yeah. To so what a lot of the questions were, what is it? How does it, this sounds amazing, but we don't know. So actually in about 20 minutes, it'll be eight o'clock GMT time. Um, I'm actually hosting a presentation. You get back to the person who invited you if you want to jump on there and learn more, but I'm actually going to be sharing exactly what NRF2 is, how it works, what it does in the full shebang in hopefully about 20 minutes. So uh, in length, but it will definitely be in 20 minutes is what I meant. Well, put your Zoom in the chat. That, that yeah, Zoom sure. in the chat. Okay, thanks so much. So what great stories, so many stories and all so very different. And isn't it interesting what, what humans and animals have in common? We heard of several different animals, not just horses. And the, the things that we have in common that are basic to our levels of health. So I love every time one of these beautiful creatures has been helped naturally. I am not a horse owner. I am a horse lover. So I'm not even a horse owner and I have saved many, many horses from being put down just because of the stories that you know we, we've heard tonight. So now, uh, while we do not claim to treat, cure or mitigate any diseases, let's have a look at what this NRF2 activation is so i'm going to share my screen and we need to get back to that and here we here we go so let's see if this will play like it's supposed to there we go so to understand nrf2 activation which is what protandum does let's first look at and understand oxidative stress so oxidative stress is present in all of our cells when there's an imbalance in the number of free radicals causing damage and our body's ability to effectively uh, eliminate them. So an average human produces 300 septillion free radicals per day, every day. That's just an, an, an average human. So the free radicals, Free radicals are both from internal and external influences. And they are toxins that we're all exposed to that uh, create free radicals. While we don't necessarily see free radicals, we can see their effects. So here we have an illustration of a normal, healthy, functioning cell. So that's the blue one with a little green nucleus. So that cell has the ability to fight back against the free radicals that it's, it's uh, dealt with. And then we have a cell that is being attacked by more free radicals than the cell can compensate for. And then finally, we, we see a cell that has lost its ability to fight and has succumbed to the free radical damage and is now a diseased cell. So while we can't see our cells, we've all seen the effects of, of an apple cut in half and we see it turn brown from the exposure to oxygen in the air. The same thing happens in our cells over time as our natural defenses decline. But our body is designed to overcome them as we see in the first cell. But as we get older, the, the free radicals begin to win out more and more. But the good news is NRF2 activation can help us get back in the fight. So how do we fight oxidative stress and free radical damage? Well. NRF2 is a protein messenger in each of our cells, which signals a response to oxidative stress by turning on our ability to make more antioxidants. So there are two types of antioxidants, direct and indirect. So with direct antioxidants, which are the ones you consume in fruits and veggies and vitamins and stuff, one molecule of antioxidant can fight one molecule of free radical and then they're both eliminated. But keeping in mind how many free radicals we're uh, exposed to every day, that would be quite a lot. So the better option is the antioxidants our body makes. Several different types, but the main one, which you've probably heard of, is glutathione. 
Glutathione is our body's master antioxidant that our body actually makes. So each molecule of antioxidant our body makes can fight 1 million free radicals every second, 24 seven, and only the free radicals die. So that little antioxidant goes on and on and on. So now we're actually getting somewhere. So don't just take antioxidants, make your own. Well, you might be asking, well, how does this relate to horses? Well, there are many studies on equine health and we heard um, Google Scholar is, is one uh, place to, to, to look that up. And uh, so a lot on equine health and oxidative stress, but I chose this one because it illustrates the simplicity of our goal, which is to maintain the antioxidant oxidant equilibrium and thereby improve animal welfare. And that's exactly what NRF2 does. As we saw in the cell illustration, free radicals get out of control and our antioxidant production just can't keep up. And that's where the problem starts. So we can address the imbalance before a problem manifests in a symptom or address it when something like laminitis becomes evident. Inflammation is the result of the damage. So issues like laminitis show up. Quite simply, NRF2 activation dials up our production of our natural antioxidants like glutathione, but also some you probably haven't heard of like catalase and superoxide dismutase. Now this is another good resource for you if you're familiar with Equus Magazine. They often uh, produce studies and highlight some, some issues. So they highlighted two here. One is, um, the dopamine neurons are damaged by free radicals, which are byproducts of oxidative processes, indicating a strong association of oxidative stress to neurons in horses with PPID. And then oxidative stress has been associated with motor neuron disease in horses. So those are, are two very difficult issues to deal with. Oftentimes vets, um, you know, sort of give up, but we now have a very natural and effective approach. So how does oxidative stress affect your horse? Well, there are many ways, metabolic disease, uh, Cushing's disease, which we heard about, EMS, heaves, which is an inflammatory airway disease, eye diseases like uvulitis, even osteoarthritis and tendon and muscle injuries and fatigue, sarcoids and other tumors inability to sweat, which isn't such a, a problem here in the UK in colder climates, but in warmer climates, it can be quite, quite serious. And stomach ulcers, hoof issues like laminitis, founder, navicular, and head shaking, which can be a trigeminal nerve issue. And I've got a, a fabulous story about that. And so then how does NRF2 affect your horse? Well, inflammation levels are decreased while antioxidant levels are increased. As a result, benefits could include better skin and coat, increased energy and endurance, healthier immune system, better joint health and mobility, reduced joint pain and inflammation, stronger resistance to allergies, better tooth and gum health, better cardiovascular health, increased mental function and alertness, and reduction of age-related health problems. Now I put this slide up here because I think it shows um, the, the organs in the, the horse that are affected. And then it highlights the disease state that can be affecting that organ. Interesting that some are uh, some of the ones that, that humans have to deal with like glaucoma and, and cataracts, um, COPD, arthritis, you know, several that are common amongst uh, mammals, really. So if you'd like to take a screenshot of that, please do. And uh, I think it, it's great to, to refer to that, um, you know, if you have a look at this first and see if something pops up, and then you might want to delve in a little bit deeper and, of course, get with the person who invited you on tonight to direct that, that research. Now, laminitis is sort of what brought this group to, together. And, um, you know, this time of year, it can be a big problem due to grass, but there are many factors that contribute to laminitis. In fact, an event that kicked off NRF2 activation in the horse world about 10 years ago, 
was when a mare in Florida delivered a stillborn foal and developed full-blown laminitis from that. She was owned by a well-known thoroughbred breeder with some of the best vets available who tried everything to help her and finally advised putting her down. Well, she was more than just another horse. She was a favorite and out of desperation, her owners gave her their NRF2 activators because nothing could hurt her at this, at this point and they had no idea if it would help, but she survived the night. The next morning, she was winnowing to her stable mates and has gone on to deliver several healthy foals. So that was that was a good 10 years ago. Now I know she, she's 23 at, at, at the moment. But here are uh, examples of, of an, a pony, 17 year old pony, uh, history of chronic laminitis and metabolic syndrome. And you can see the transition of the hoof just from April to July. So imagine what is happening inside her body for that to take place. So thank you for staying with us thus far. I am going to now, while you gather your thoughts and your questions, I'm going to play a short four minute video clip of a couple of horses that had several issues and their owner uh, took before and after videos and uh, just delight in sharing how their horses turned around and they were going to answer your questions. quite a long video for this. I didn't do my slides this morning. But what happened here? I think that I wonder.
Well, I never get never get tired of uh, seeing those. So here we go. Uh, if you would like to unmute yourselves and uh, we'll take your questions. Oh, yes, I know it. It's hard to um. watch. In the beginning but when we see the result go ahead Patricia I know in the chat someone asked if uh if they're in a show or um some sort of competition should they increase um I wish I could do my best English accent for you guys so that I fit in but um <laughs> <laughs> but um it's so I would say yes as long as like here, um, if we have a track horse and they are drug tested, um, sometimes in some drug testing, the ashwagandha will show up. So seven days prior, they will stop their horse. Um, but that's not the masses. Usually no competitions, um, don't drug test, maybe a dressage might if you're doing, um, kind of high higher competitions but um you can interestingly enough give the axio oh. to your horse and how cool is that you can give the axio and um you can also give it to your performance dogs if you'd like um, but that is just going to um help them with their just calmness, their performance, their recovery, and things like that as well. So knowing that uh, Axio is a powder that we add to water to mix up, which uh, interestingly, yep. How do you give it to a horse? Just in in the water bucket? How, what's the ratio there? So, I guess you yeah you could put it in their water bucket and as they I would probably not give a full water bucket just because how much are they really going to drink right mm -hmm. um or being a powder I mean you could probably sprinkle it on grain too if you wanted I, I've done some sublingual axia yeah. Yeah. right <laughs> <laughs> okay interesting to play with that's great I hadn't even thought about that it's right. actually new new uh new information to myself as well um but candace who was on is the one who told me that and i was like oh my gosh no way <laughs> wow that's that's tremendous right any any questions any more questions if if so just uh, it'd be i mean unmute yourself and ask or you can type it in the chat sometimes you get too many in the chat and, and they all disappear <laughs> anyone else and I've got a lot of horsey people on here tonight, so now's your chance. If no more, no more questions, then um, we'll yeah, I have a question. If you can hear me, um, is this going to be recorded? We have recorded it. Yes. Okay. And where can we find the recording? Can you? What? Uh, how did you learn about this call? Um, it was posted on one of our Facebook pages. I'm not positive um, where I saw it. Okay, I'm going. If you, could, if you could write my name down and maybe try to message me through Facebook, that that would be great. Okay, Ellen. Oh, so Ellen's iPhone. What is your um, surname? Yeah, so it's going to be Ellen. The middle name is Lyle, L-I-S-L-E. Last name is Simonis, S-E-M-O-N-E-S. I'll type it in the chat. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Can I just ask a question, please, sure. Patricia? Um, you know, with our American friends, um, are you able to tell us whether you know if um, racehorses have been using it in America and if it's approved by, you know, the American Jockey Club? Yeah, Amber, take yeah. that one. 
Yeah. So actually that story that you were talking about, Patricia, with the um, mayor who had the Leonidas, um, it's actually a pretty huge racetrack who has um, the Secretariat lineage at their track. And, and needles. needles as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they um, use it. Now, we actually have um, coming up here in Indiana, we have a pretty big track and one of Candace's clients will have their first race of being on Pro Tandem. Um, and so that's pretty exciting, but you just have to look up what are the regulations for the drug testing done? Um, I know there's different ones in different areas. And so you just have to look up what that is. And I do know I had another um, race gal and she was like, it's uh, the ashwagandha will show up in this testing. So I'm, we just stop it seven days prior. Mm -hmm. Like I've I said, that yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends, but yes, uh, horses and jockeys. There are actually jockeys on this as well. Um, I know here, I don't know if there, but ra barrel racing is also very, very popular. And we have a lot of bleeders. So horses that start to bleed out um, just from the mass amount of stress. And it is completely gone, like no issues anymore. That is amazing. Uh, In America, it was, you know, snake venom. That's what they use for bleeding, yes. which wasn't mm -hmm. in England, you know, so bleeding was still a big issue and is. Yeah. Still. Yeah. So that's been, I've had several bell racing friends um, that, that, that was kind of their very first thing. Um, no bleeding. And um, another horse was lame. Um, gosh, I don't remember how lame she, or how long she was lame, but came back. Um, and is doing phenomenal uh, in in some serious races, not just you know yeah. little races, but some serious races. Um, people keep asking about the dosage. So here's a really cool thing, guys. Um, it's honestly one pill is standard. All right, mm -hmm. for humans, for dogs, for horses. All right. Now, if you have something that's more serious going on like candace's autoimmune disease with the eyes two to three um and then maintenance stays back down to one um like lisa said um with the the bones you know she did six um so i've given a a, a dane who had a serious serious bone issue six a day um so but those are very, very serious and for a short amount of time, right? Um, but typically one to two, um, I do have a barrel racer. She's a professional racer and she's told me maximum she's given was four. Um, and that was for her very, like they're, they're going every weekend, they're showing, they're traveling, they're doing all sorts of stuff um, every single weekend. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of just a trial and error. I know like, hey, I'm not really seeing a, a bunch of change here after, you know, two to three weeks. Uh, I'm going to increase the dosage and see <clears throat> what change you get. I had a, a horse a couple of years ago. A uh, lady contacted me because her horse was so lame that the vet said to put her down. And this was actually this lady's best friend. And she got on a video call with me out in the yard. And my first sight of seeing this horse, I thought she taught it to dance because it was just like this on all four hooves. And then I realized it was in agony, immediately collapsed while we're on this video. So I overnighted her. She had ordered, but it would take you know a few days. So I overnighted her, I think 10 tablets. So she gave two in the morning and two in the evening. That was on a Thursday. Sunday, she sent me a video and Beth was just walking in the snow. This was a January. We'd had some snow. She just sniffed in the snow, you know, turned her right around. But we, 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 you can't hurt by giving more. And no. when horses in such acute agony, just throw it at them. Just like 
like Bonnie did with um, Miss Pangea. Yeah. There's, I know Alberto's on the line. He's a, uh, one of the top veterinarians in Mexico, Mexico City, and um, specifically dogs as pet, pet tandem. But his stories, I mean, the dogs are fast, guys. They are fast, fast turnarounds, um, you know, days. Uh, like Lisa was saying, you know, she makes sure they at least have three to six days on pet tandem before they go to the vet. Um, but they are some very fast turnarounds. So uh, the horses sometimes, every horse is different, right? Just like every person. Um, yeah, I love, I just love all of his testimonies, but sometimes it might, it might be very fast. It might be, or it might take two to three months. Like it just depends. Um, but it is so much faster than anything else that you have been or could have been doing. And even something as simple as hoof growth here in the U.S., like abscess and hoof growth is awful, 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 yeah. awful. Um, and abscess, like I am just so thankful I haven't had to treat abscess in like <laughs> three years. Um, but to um, be able to just totally take out hoof supplements because they just don't work. They don't work, guys. They don't work very well. Um, and to have something that does. There has been just barriers um, that are a part of the company because now they have something that they can recommend that they know works. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the stories could go on and on. Um, I joke and I say my animals are my um, most expensive hobby, which we all, I think we all can agree and the worst business investment. Mm -hmm. And, um, but this company and being a part of this has allowed me to be able to have the cushion to do the things that I love to do there. Um, and why not be able to do something you love with something you love, um, fund it, finance it, have fun with it, and then, um, you know, help others do the same. Exactly. Gosh, we, we could go on and on and on because I've, I've got so many stories too, but um, any more questions? If not, then We'll let you all go because we've gone over just a little bit, but that's all right, I think. And then I'll get this recording posted in the groups that um, I know about and ask the person who invited you on the call tonight if you would like to get started on, on any of these products or if you'd like the recording and, and they'll be in touch. I think that's it. Thank you, Amber, so much. Thank you. Love it. Maybe we need to do do this again. Very fun. Okay. Bye for now, everyone.